what Common said about the NRA getting in God's way. Here, it's the hypocrisy uh, of Hollywood sitting in there with armed guards uh, around them to, to be trashing the NRA. I applaud the NRA's response that they put to that, saying, let's stand up for our veterans. Let's stand up for our heroes. Let's stand up for those who fought for our freedom. Let's stand up for those who uh, gave their lives and, and blood uh, for Hollywood's opportunity to, to give their free speech. I just think the hypocrisy of these celebrations what, uh, are, are, are so obvious. Go ahead, Angela. So, Alice, are you our retainer? Like, last week we were sitting right here. We're not in the same place, but we were sitting right here on this show, and you did the same NRA public service announcement. Like, these folks are wrong as two left shoes. They are wrong. This isn't about the NRA standing up to protect people in Hollywood. This isn't about people who are out of touch. The NRA is out of touch. Like, if you don't know anything else right now, let's lay partisanship aside. Let's lay all of this aside and say, kids have died. The NRA is out of touch. They are in God's way. Common had it right. Right? Like, there, we didn't need anybody to tell us that. We don't need you on here telling us how amazing the NRA is. They're not. They're terrible. They are terrible. And it's high time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Talk Headlines series. I'm your host, Jay, and this is The Objective. I want to thank you so much for tuning into the 44th episode of the Let's Talk Headlines series. I am honored and I'm grateful to have each and every one of you here. I don't take it for granted. And I want to thank you for your continued support. New visitors, I want to welcome you to the channel. If you aren't following me on Instagram yet, give me a follow at The Objective Podcast. And I want to direct your attention right here, www.themaven.net forward slash political storm. You can find some of my articles on political storm. You can uh, find these podcasts on political storm. But not only that, there are a myriad of different contributors um, on that website. Uh, who, you know, have different views. You have progressives, you have liberals, you have independents, you have um, you know, libertarians. You have a, a variety of different mind uh, mindsets and worldviews uh, on that website, and they all come together on the hub, the center, the core of uh, political discourse. Because at Political Storm, um, it is the goal of the administrators, of the contributors, to bring back the discussion to politics. Okay, so with that, I want to lead us into today's show. Um, the quote of the day is from William Arthur Ward. Okay, it says, The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the sails. Okay, again, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. And the realist adjusts the sails. This, uh, as I actually was reading this um, quote, it reminded me of a movie that I saw not too long ago. It's not a new movie. I probably saw it about a year ago, to be honest with you. Um, Bridge of Spies, I believe it's called, with Tom Hanks. And he plays a lawyer. And basically, he is defending a spy. I believe he's a Russian spy. Um, and he's basically outlining the jeopardy that this guy's in. He's like, you could face the electric chair. You can, you know, he's just, you know, laying it on him, how much trouble he's in. And the guy's just nonchalant. And he's kind of like, you, you're not, <laughs> check out the clip. I have a mandate to serve you. Nobody else does. Quite frankly, everybody else has an interest in sending you to the electric chair. All right. You don't seem alarmed. Would it help? Would it help? And that's really interesting. It goes with the with the quote, really. Um, you know, the pessimist complains about the wind. What does what value does that bring to your life? If you know there's strong winds in your life and all you can do is complain, all you can do is curse at the wind. How does that help? That all that does is put you deeper in the hole, probably makes you more depressed, makes you more angry. Um, so just going into this week, just think about it, you know, let's, let's try to be a realist, even an optimist to expect change, to know that change is going to come. All we have to do is hold on. Um, 
or you can be even more uh, proactive like the realist and adjust your sales in the moment to the winds. Um, before I don't want to take too much, too much time here, but I did, um, injure my knee slash my lower back. It's been, uh, developing over time. I've been off work for about eight days. I go back tomorrow. I've been doing physio, Cairo, acupuncture, all that stuff. And when you're in a situation like that, because I'm relatively active, um, it kind of sucks to be, you know, out of commission, just sitting around, just waiting as the days go by. Right. So that quote actually speaks to me because I was complaining a bit to myself, like, why me? Blah, blah. It doesn't do anything. It just stresses me out even more. So I'll leave you guys with that thought. The first clip that I showed um, with Angela Rye, some of you may have heard of her. Some of you may uh, know her, may even like her. Um, She is a an American attorney. Uh, principal and CEO of Impact Strategies. It's a political advocacy firm in Washington. She's also a political commentator for CNN and NPR um, political analyst. So she she is a well-spoken woman, educated, of course, um, and she she is a bona fide activist when it comes to the ideals and the 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 causes of the left. Um, and in that clip that I showed you, um, it was very interesting because she uh, she said some words that really interested me, uh, piqued my interest. She essentially said that the NRA is in God's way. Now, maybe I should just read just so I don't go on a huge tangent, maybe I'll just read the the post that I put on Instagram in relation to this. But I just found it so incredible, not in the good way. Well, maybe incredible wasn't the right word. I found it so intriguing that there you go, that she would, um, you know, make such a statement. So essentially what she's saying is that because her views are obviously that the NRA is to blame for the school shootings, the NRA is to blame for, I guess, all gun violence in in America, I, I guess um, she's saying that. And, and obviously the Democratic position on guns, uh, some go as far to say that there should be no assault rifles. There should be a pure like a full on assault rifle ban. Um, and when I say assault rifle, I mean like just a semi automatic weapon, not an automatic firearm. Uh, I mean, like when you pull the trigger once, one bullet comes out. Um, And and, and Democrats such as Dianne Feinstein, they are open to a full out semi-automatic rifle ban. Um, And according to that statement that she made, saying that the NRA is in God's way, she's saying that her cause, the cause of the left is God's God's cause, essentially. Um, so, so, so she, she, she's a prophetess, or she's um, a clairvoyant, or a priestess. I don't know what she is, but that that statement really intrigued me. Um, and I'll just read this to you because, yeah. So Angela Rye. This is uh, according to my uh, Instagram post that I made twenty three hours ago. So Angela Rye, CNN political commentator and apparent prophetess of God, made a bold claim on CNN by stating that the NRA is in God's way. Folks, do not be mistaken. What we are witnessing here is virtue signaling to a startling degree. Does Angela Rye have the audacity to claim authority on what is in God's way? These are the same people who rebuked him to bow. Uh, I hope I said his name right. For kneeling in prayer before each game, these are the same people who mock Christians and berate Mike Pence for unapologetically expressing his relationship with God. They're making fun on him, uh, making fun of him on the View uh, with Joy Behar, I think her name is, saying you know that he's mentally ill because he speaks to God. Um, these are the same people who condemn your right to own a rifle, but champion women's rights 
to murder unborn children at a dizzying rate. These are the same people that try to eliminate God from schools, entertainment, and society as a whole. What God is it that you speak of? Now, it's very important here that me, by saying that I'm not trying to virtue signal, um, in my argument, my articulation as to why people need firearms or why it's their right to have firearms, I do not bring in my religion, my religious views. I do not bring in my Christianity. I don't bring in anything like that because that's an argument that you can make based on fact alone. You can, you know, base your argument on statistics alone. You don't need to bring in uh, religion to this argument. And the mere fact that she did that, um, knowing what her positions are, um, it really kind of threw me off. It, it really did. So that's what I'll say about that, folks. Um, I was browsing uh, some headlines and I saw one that actually made my eyes almost pop out of their sockets. Um, Facebook, I'll actually read the headline here from The Guardian. Facebook asks users, should we allow men to ask children for sexual images? Let me suggest to you that if you, and I'm not talking about Facebook right now, I'm talking about you, my viewer, if you have to ask someone or you have to ask yourself or there's an actual struggle within your mind as to whether this question that I asked was right or wrong, should it be allowed, should it be disallowed, if you have to struggle with that, or can you know consult with someone else? I'm going to suggest to you that there is something. Um, I'll say it this way: there are probably a few fries short of a happy meal up there. Um, this goes to show. This is a poll that was released on Facebook to the to its constituents, to its members. Now, that in itself is disgusting. The the, the mere fact they had to ask this question, and why they asked this question. Uh, why it was even a question, but what, what was even more bizarre were, were the answers that some of the people that responded to this poll were. Um, you had people in favor of this and obviously people who said, you know what, this is disgusting. This shouldn't be on Facebook. Um, it just goes to show, folks. You look at nature, OK, you look at animals in the wild. Um, predators they attack the slowest. They don't go after the strongest. They don't go after the, you know, the most confident. They, they, they attack the weakest, the slowest, and the easiest prey. Predators, they look for the, the prey that are not in the pack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you see these attacks on potential and, you know, possible future attacks on kids, if pedophilia comes into the mainstream, like we see it rearing its head in a poll such as this, kids are under attack. And this is a direct result of the moral failures and bankruptcy in society. Um, we, what we need in society, folks, are leaders. We need strong leaders with a moral compass, because if we are left to our own devices, if we are left to, 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 uh, you know, if basically our feelings dictate our legislation, it's only a matter of time before, you know, some of the most bizarre things become normal, like we see today. Some things that, you know, are just outright mental illness be becoming normalized. We're going to see a lot more of that. Um, so just be vigilant as time progresses. Pay attention to what's happening, current events. And uh, it, it really is a spectacle to see. And that was, uh, that, that poll on Facebook, it really kind of, at first I thought it was a joke, but it's real. There is a, there's a real moral problem, um, in society today. Finally, folks, North Korea willing to talk to the USA about giving up their nukes. According to, uh, South Korea, uh, North Korea is willing to speak to the United States about denuclearization. Now, this is huge, especially um, when, you know, for the last few months, we've been hearing that Kim Jong Un has been launching missiles in a threatening manner, stating that he wants to destroy the United States, wipe it off, off the face of the planet, destroy the White House. Um, this is quite the dichotomy that it's quite a stark contrast from what we've been seeing 
recently. So this is good. And this is testament. Um, say what you will. I mean, there are people who say, well, North Korea has always been trying to denuclearize. Say what you will. But this is testament. Um, and I will give credit where credit is due to President Donald Trump strength or sorry, peace through strength. Um, who knows what sort of mental issue Kim Jong Un has, especially in light of the, the comments that he made, the threatening comments he made to the, the strongest power in the world. Um, but this is definitely an example of peace through strength. Um, luckily, there were no warheads that needed to be fired. There was no war that needs to be started. But through dipl diplomacy, uh, through um, trade restrictions and, uh, you know, affecting their economy. Um, luckily that this was and I mean, we're still waiting. This is not concluded completely, but it just goes to show that strong leadership taking a stance um, definitely is beneficial um, uh, to your nation as a leader. So with that, folks, I think I have talked your ear off. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Until the next time we see each other again, make it your goal to be objective. Have a good night.